All right. Welcome back right. to a, another episode of Hammering Down. I am being joined by a very special person, someone who hails from Doma Ahinkro, Ghana. He, yes. but, you know, really comes from the New York, uh, New Jersey area where he made quite a name for himself through uh, St. Benedict's Prep, later through uh, Monmouth or Monmouth, and then later to UCLA, which he is recently a graduate of. The 25-year-old mm-hmm. man who is a college mm-hmm. grad and man's our midfield, Mr. Anderson Isaydo. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, my brother. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you very much. How is everything with you? Hey, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Very glad to hear that. Very happy to hear that. Thank you for having me here. So, Anderson, I mean, everybody knows you on on the pitch. You know, you it's it's no secret that you're pretty much mm-hmm. everybody's favorite person around the Birmingham <laughs> area. This do you recognize that as well, or is it just kind of you're going through life? <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I'm a low key guy, so I keep it low key. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate that. I appreciate the fans for always having my back since I arrived in Birmingham. You know, that that's a really special for me. You know, for them showing me love. You know, through who I am as a person on on the field. You know, I appreciate that. Yeah, but I see it. But I just, you know, I enjoy it being that type of person that people love and just you know, do my thing, you know, I don't get too much of it, but I just want to do well and help the team grow and build more, you know, that's the main focus. So all the outside things is just like, you know, I'm just happy to be there and just do my thing. Yeah. So I have to ask because it was such a shift from last year to this year, two years ago to this year, where when you first came to Birmingham, it was like Bulldog Anderson always, always going in on somebody coming up, getting ready. It seemed like you were always down to scrap. And then this year, it felt a little bit more low key. And you've shown a lot of improvement from the last year. What what kind of changed from 2019 or 2020 and so on and so forth? It's just my mentality, you know. Uh, you know, when I arrived in 2019 and 20, you know, I was just coming up from like uh uh like Atlanta, you know, so I had to make a name for myself and also all this stuff going on with the moving. So I wasn't like myself self, you know. You know, I just moved from college 2019, you know, college soccer and professional. You know, I just got to Atlanta, you know, things didn't go the way I was expecting it, you know. So I mentally I wasn't really like up to where I needed to be, you know. But 2019, 2020, you know, once I realized and make sure that Birmingham is going to be my home for the couple of years I've been there, so I, I just, you know, change the mentality that this is what I'm going to, I'm going to show who I am. I'm going to prove to everybody that, you know, this is me, you know, yeah, this is who I am and this is what I want to be for my future, for my career. You know, I just want to make a name for myself, for everybody to see that, hey, you know, somebody that nobody didn't believe in, somebody that people left him over, you know, now here he did making a good name at a place where everybody enjoy him and be, you know, really want to be like, you know. So it's just change of mentality and the comfortability I had. You know, once I'm comfortable with the people I'm around and, you know, I feel like this is where I need to be, you know, it just a, it's just a beast mode type of mentality for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you kind of mentioned beast mode at the end. Are you uh are you a big uh American football guy? Uh I would say yes, yes, because I didn't know the game of football, American football, till like I got here and then you know one time my family kind of like explained it to me. It was the game I watched, my first football game I watched was the like the Seattle against the Patriots. Yeah. That, so you know all about Beast also. Mode. You know all about Marshawn yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. After after that, I got <laughs> I got to know the game of you know football here, you know. 
and see how it runs and you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I i can't play with it but i like it you know yeah i love it so you mentioned your family here um in new york new jersey um and that's the leongs right yeah and the Leong. so kind of explain to the people who maybe don't know what's the person that, or what's the kind of deal with that what's the what's the backstory to with them yeah so i i arrived at st benedict's prep you know uh 2013 uh when i got there the school is all boys school you know they arrange uh groups by not age you know they just every they kind of like range groups by the names of people so group is kind of like where we all go to kind of like have a spare time you know to catch up with your homework or type of you know everything you need to do you know with the, it's part of the school you know program so i didn't know anything so i was there and then there was this one kid in my group which is my brother now you know uh you know he will you know be walking around and playing around and i'd be like yo man sit down <laughs> i just try to you know i have an accent back then so you know i'm trying to finish up with the homework you know so i'm trying to see what the vibe is you know within the group who is in my class you know who can explain things to me and this guy be playing around and you know <laughs> just say hey man man that's what i used to say, I say man sit down man you know hey keep, and then we playing around like grab grab you know say yo sit down relax you know so later on you know we became friends and then he he introduced me to his family you know one time he said oh you know uh you know because the school was going to finish and you have to find a place to go you know because it's a boarding school so it, you know like your christmas will be much better if you go on somebody's house you know to spend some time over there i didn't have anybody here at that time so he said yeah you can come to my house you know yeah i will be welcome to have you so since then that was the vibe you know i got there you know they made me feel like a family you know you know treat me well you know very lovely people you know i've been there you know they've been in my life for since i've been in america you know been my backbone here you know very grateful for them and that's how it all started you know god put people in your life for a reason that you don't know you know just being a good person and just respecting each other you know i always tell people if i met my brother and other than respect him the way you know respect should be given to each and every one in this life you know i wouldn't probably be having an opportunity to be living with them or you know so it's just a motivation for me to always tell people that you have to respect people regardless of the circumstances of the age or whoever they are you know because we are all one people in this world regardless of whoever we are you know you have to show love and respect to each other so that's my back story behind that so i got there you know now here i am since then i never left but from that day you know being a very instrumental part of my career my life in america forever grateful for them the leons are my my everything yeah very very pleasure to have them in my life yeah grateful so for them. i mean so whenever you came from ghana the way that i understand how you even got over here to america is that you were playing you're playing a, a game of football uh with some grown men and someone from yeah. St. Benedict's just saw you playing and they were like man this kid's for real you know let's bring him over to the US kind of what was your life growing up in Ghana and what kind of led to that final moment of being shown or being brought to the US yeah it was you know life in Ghana like it is it, it was tough for me you know because i came from like the real village in Ghana like not village but municipal but it's really far from the city like 9 hours and this guy who brought me here is a native of that place but he grew up in the US you know so he was were back there for for vacation you know and then I, the word was spreading in town that there's a man in town who is kind of like checking out for opportunity for somebody you know so everybody was kind of like it wasn't just me everybody was desperate for that opportunity because life is not easy in africa you know not just only ghana but in africa itself so everybody was desperate for that opportunity but i was just you know chilling you know just do my thing you know like i don't know how it happened you know he came he saw a lot of people but at the end of the day they chose me which i always say is a blessing from the skies from god 
because he always have a plan for each and everyone in this life, you know? Everybody have their own story, their life, what God has planned for them in this world. So I was very blessed to have that opportunity. And that was my life changing because I don't have anything with my life back then. You know, I was young, 16, you know, I don't have a mother, you know, like life is tough, you know, like it's just my father, you know, and my father too is trying to make life for himself. So that opportunity kind of like changed my, my life. I was very excited. You know, when I found out that I got, I got chosen, like that was it. <laughs> I was very happy, you know, coming to America, you know. <laughs> I was so happy and that is it. You know, that was a game changer for me. I came and that the rest is history from there. You know, in every single thing that I've ever read from you, from any interview and everything while prepping for this, you know, it, God always comes up and it's always seems, he always seems to be a very massive part of your life. And as you mentioned, like your mom passed when you were young and, you know, you went through a stage where I think you said, or I read somewhere, I think that you were in an orphanage at one point. Um, how does was there ever a moment that your faith ever felt like it swayed or did it ever, did it feel like you were strong and steady for the entire time? Yeah. Like I was, I'm a, I'm a big believer, you know, like I just, I just believe that just being a good deed person, you know, like good finds good, you know, in this world we live in, you know, if you're a good person within the heart, and you believe that you always will be good, I think good will always will be by your side and you will never find no trouble, you know? Like, that's like my life, you know? Growing up, I was always a good kid, you know? I was always like, you know, I care for people, you know? So like my faith was always being good to people, that's it. Whether it have to be helping people, you know, because all we got is people, you know? You don't know who's gonna help you one day. You don't know where your opportunity is gonna come from. You know, so since, you know, my mom's passing and everything, it just become that this is my life. You know, this is me. You know, I have to do the right things. You know, I cannot get in trouble. You know, I have to make sure that I'm on the right path because I don't have nobody there for me beside my father, you know, because that's all I got at the moment. So it's kind of like it was an extra motivation type of thing for me, you know, like knowing that I don't have nobody in my life now. So all I got to do is just me. So I got to make sure that I make the right decision. I do the right things, you know, like I do things that people always will like, oh, this kid, you know, or oh, this kid is a good kid, you know, like in this world, that's that's the vibe, you know, like you always have to, you always have to be good regardless of the seconds who are around you, whoever, will, you know, just be you, be good to people regardless, you know, respect people, love people from your heart. And I feel like that's my signature, you know, like, I, I like people, you know, if you like me, I like you for who you are, you know, and that has been like my motive all the time, you know, so my faith within God is, God is everything, you know, I believe that he's everything for all of us, you know, whether he's there, he's still my, my backbone, but the rest is on, how can I, how can I do the rest, you know, how can I work hard, you know, how can I believe in myself, you know? And those are the things that we, as a human being, we need to practice more. You know, the rest is on you. You know, you let God do his part, you do your part on this earth, you know, because your decisions are going to be a part of your success, of your death, the decision that you know, can be good or can be bad and they can affect can be good bad decision can be is bad you know so the decision you make you get the end results that's life you know the bible does say you know you do reap what you sow and you know you have lived a life where you've been nothing but kind to people and right. success has followed you a lot of places exactly. and you you went to, at first to Monmouth uh, mm -hmm. out of New Jersey, yeah. And uh, Robert McCourt has produced so much talent in sports. I mean, it seems like every year they're putting somebody else out there in the MLS or USL. Yeah. You know how 
how did Monmouth help you transition to UCLA? What, you know, what was the kind of path like there? Uh, Monmouth played a good role in my life uh, because, you know, it was close to my family. You know, at first I was just only been here two years. So I didn't know anybody else. So like, I didn't want to go to like a far place from New Jersey, you know, so and I don't speak English that well, you know, big university, you know, I couldn't like at, at that time, I, I wouldn't be able to adjust, you know, the, the academic part of everything, you know, like going to a, a super big university. So I, I was like, you know, Mamet is close home. I, I came to New Jersey based here, you know, it's nice place, you know, it's around the shores, you know, let me stay here, build my resume, you know, like learn how, see how the school work, school system works here in the college part, you know. So education wise, it helped me, you know, make sure that I'm always ready for the next step, you know. And soccer wise too, it helped me a lot because I was playing, you know, I was getting my foot out the door, you know. I was able to get opportunity to play with the Red Bull too back then. And, you know, all because of, New Jersey to stay in New Jersey. So help me to understand where I am now, you know, because it gives me the exposure, you know, for me to get to where I am at, at this point. Because if I didn't go to Mammoth, I didn't know where my life would have been right now, you know. It could have been better, but I feel like Mammoth was a stepping stone for me to see the real life of how college is and to be ready for a bigger picture in my life. So, yeah, it, it helped me a lot. What, just in general, coming from Ghana to the U.S., what is, how much do you just have to learn, not even just like language and stuff like that, but just culture wise? For me, I can't fathom that because I grew up here my entire life. But for you, what, what all did you have to even learn, even just through your first two years before college? So it seems like Anderson's uh, Wi-Fi, you could probably hear, is getting a little bit spotty. Um, he has left the call. I think he's going to be coming back, um, you know, so we will see real shortly. Oh, just smack the microphone. Why don't I? Easy, brother. All right. And we're back. Anderson's now back on an iPhone, I think, or some kind of phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> The question I kind of left off, I don't know if you heard it, was uh -huh. not even just transitioning to college, but those two years before college, what did you have to learn? Because it, I know it's not just language, but it's also like culturally and stuff like that. What all did you have to like soak in? It was a lot, but I was more focusing on the on the soccer and education part of it, you know, because education brought me to the country, you know. So, and soccer. So I was kind of like always trying to transition both too, you know, because I wanted to become a pro and I also wanted to be at an environment where I can be a pro. So I want to do the things that I can do to get to pro. So the culture was just, you know, I'm just adjusting it to it because it wasn't like a big deal. I like the food, you know, <laughs> I like the energy here, you know, I'm grateful for it because. It's better than what I used to have in Africa. So culture wasn't that bad, you know. It was just the game. How can I, you know, get a good grade, you know, so that I can stay in college and keep my scholarship, you know, because I, I'm not just an ordinary person. I need, I hold a scholarship. So if you're not doing well in college, you can't keep your scholarship. If you're not doing well in school, you can't keep your scholarship. Right. So the transition for me was how can I get good grades so that I can be at a better environment or like, you know, like a place where I feel like I can have a shot to expose my talent, you know? And I think that's what Mamet did for me, you know, and St. Benedict did for me, you know? They put me on the map with exposure with school and soccer 
And then after that, I was like, okay, let me go to Mammoth. It's close. I can be home. I can be around the people that I knew from New Jersey because I only knew people here early. So I was like, okay, I don't know anywhere else. I don't, I never knew, I never been at any place. So I was like, I'd rather will be here than going somewhere where I don't have nobody over there. If anything happened to me, I don't know anybody who can rescue me from it, you know? So staying at home at Mammoth was the key. But it also wasn't at all because I want to also make it to the next level. And I feel like that it will be hard if I'm a mammoth. So now I have to do well at school so that I can get good grades and even have a good scholarship if a coach somewhere else will give me a shot again. Right. So that was that was the transition within it. You know, I was not just transition only on just, you know, uh culture wise culture was fine because i'm good i love people i can i love the food i love everybody it was just how can i be a good student how can i be more disciplined more on and off the field you know so that i can get like good season good good match i can maybe make it to red bull too for opportunity over there you know those were the things that i was looking for because that's my way out here in this country yeah so when you were with uh when you were with uh, Red Bulls too, did you happen to be there at the same time as Junior? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Junior at Red Bull. So when Junior signed to Birmingham, it was like I knew Junior a while ago, you know. Like I used to come in as a college guy and he would be already playing with the twos. So we would train with them because we were playing U23. They already the the second team. So we would have a games with them, you know. So we use the same locker room. You know, sometimes if you're doing well at the twos, they will say, come train with the second team or the first team. So when I train, Junior will be there, you know, you know, we chat, you know, get to know each other, you know, positive vibes. And I end up playing with him as well. So it was a pleasure working with him. Um, Very good guy. I know you, I know you saw the news of him going over to France. When, yeah. when you first met junior with red bulls and then with legion was it just like was there something that you were just like wow this guy is did you see it coming or was it just kind of something like where did this- yeah yeah junior junior you know junior is a great guy and a, and a good player you know when i met him there he was a star at the red bull too you know me i came in you know the reason why one thing i remember is I, in training i got him <laughs> I, I got him very well with a good tackle and then <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it kind of like bothered his ankle a little bit because he had a little ankle problem back then you know but we 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 talk after you know and i say i'm sorry because i was just a college guy at a professional environment so I didn't want to kind of like upset everybody or anybody, you know, like because I'm not a professional. So but I'm going in hard for opportunity, right. you know, because I'm looking for opportunity there. You know, and he was there. So it's like, you know, he he was that type of guy, you know, the best player out there all the time, you know, doing a stand. You know, me too, we are both two different players. So he want to be the best. I want to be the best. So it's like, I don't want him to beat me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I got to, I got to defend, you know? So I'm happy. I'm happy. I was, I was, you know, the, not just happy for him. It's just that the guy also assist me for my first college, uh, like professional goal. Really? You know? Oh yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. Means, it, it means a lot for me, you know, like, since I've been at Birmingham, he was the first guy to ever give me an assist on my first professional career goal, you know, so that's like a big thing for me as well, because, you know, like he care, you know, he, he, he's a good guy, you know, positivity, you know, we all have our ups and downs in life, but you cannot just judge a man based on one thing, you know, like the man is just a good man and he deserves the opportunity. He's been in this league for so many years. I've done so many incredible things, you know. So I think this is the time for him to showcase what he got at a top level, you know. I'm very well, more than happy for him because in life, everybody have their time, you know. And if you stick to the process and you work hard to the process, your time will come, you know. And I think now is his time to go and showcase Birmingham and himself and put Birmingham on the map. And it can it can happen to all of us because 
Now junior goals, you know, it create opportunities and doors for other Birmingham players who can showcase the ability, you know. So not just junior, but he opens the door for each and everyone in our team. That's the best thing within it, you know, that I love about it. You know, he didn't just go for himself, but he create doors for other guys that are coming and even for Birmingham and even in Alabama at the yeah. moment. So I'm very happy. And, you know, I, it was a pleasure being, in, being with him as a teammate and old friend back then, you know, like uh, very happy for him. I can't wait to see what the future hopes for him. And hopefully we will always see each other one, one day. <laughs> <Watch out. laughs> so when you're talking about your first goal here and it's, yeah. you're kind of in a, whenever it comes to you playing, it always seems like you're playing kind of that, uh, you know, central defense, central defensive mid kind of ball, you know, box to box, you know, mm -hmm. ball winning midfielder, you know, for you, you don't get a chance to score that often. No. I mean, even guys like Alex get a chance more often just cause he's, you know, seven so, foot seven. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, for you to finally get that first professional goal in front of the home crowd, you know, what was that moment like for you? Oh man, it was amazing. You know, it was amazing because, you know, sometimes when you work hard, God rewards you, you know, and looking at my goal, it was the 90th minute, you know, and the way the play happened, that's why I credit Junior Flemings a lot because he initiated everything for me, you know. He works hard, you know. He came in the game, he put his, his foot on the door and he, he set it off for me, you know. So it was just like, I've been wanting to score, not wanting to score, but like so, soccer, we all want to play and win. And if you get a goal, it's a bonus for me as a, as a player. So that bonus part because i'm not a goal scorer my job is to help the team win you know but if i get that bonus part of it to add it to it it makes the game more like very bright for me so that moment was like like everything because it's been three years now you know i, I score goals in college you know like i can score goals i score goals in training you know but like in our team we had so many goal scorers so I was just kind of like just doing the job and making sure that, you know, they do their job, I do my job, you know, that was that mentality. But for me to get my first goal, you know, in front of the fans, it was this amazing feeling for me because I've been, I've been working so hard and I think God reward me for that, you know, to show the fans that, hey, you know, he deserve it. Yeah, it's been a minute for him. <laughs> For sure. you know i mean you're talking about scoring goals and yeah you you were a goal scorer back at ucla and even a little Thanks. bit i think a little bit of monmouth as well monmouth. Mm -hmm. you i mean you have a lot of goal scoring potential but you didn't have that you didn't have as many here what wh how do you where do you find the fun if you're not scoring goals, I know like for defenders, it's like, Oh, I put in a crunching tackle. And then, you know, for goalkeepers, it's like, Oh, I've made a big save. And for goals, you know, attacking players. So oh, look at this assist or look at my goal. I got here for someone who plays the defensive midfield. Where's the fun. So for me, you know, like, uh, I, I just love the game. You know, the game is my fun, you know, like, uh, the passion, you know, the game giving me this exposure to America, you know, brought me to this country, giving me education, you know, giving me like everything, like, like I, I wouldn't expect that I would be here if it wasn't the game, you know. So for me, the fan is the fun for me is when I step on the field, like my fun is giving everything I got, you know. Yeah, that's where my fun comes in because I love what I do. And I think it's a gift that God gave it to me for me to do it. So if I'm doing it with the love in my mind, I know that that's what I'm meant to do. So that's where I get my fun from, you know. I don't care if I score a goal, you know. I don't care what happened in the game. But I just, the, just having the feeling of just saying that I'm a professional soccer player and I came from nothing, you know, and I'm able to live in my dream in the United States, you know because of soccer, getting education at the top level, you know, those are my motivation and my fun within it, you know? Everybody have what they play for in their life, 
you know, for me, the fun for me is just being able to say that, hey, this is what Saka has given me. And everywhere I will stand in this world, I will prove that I love Saka in my mind, you know, and my soul. Because Saka knows that I respect it and I love it. So he will respect me too as well. No matter what the circumstances will be in my life, as long as I'm on that field, I will give it all. And if you give it all, Saka will respect you and make sure that he will show you that this guy is a Saka guy because that's where I got my most fun in. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a lot there, man. I mean, your entire story and your everything that everybody says about you and now I, you know, I'm going to talk to you. It's just, you know, you're just a great human and I love your story. And you talked okay. about getting your, your education. You finished yes. your degree while you were playing professionally, right? Yes. Yes. How yes. freaking hard was that having to balance classes and training and matches and stuff like that? It was difficult, you know, because we I will have class, you know, when COVID hit, that's when I realized that I can take the rest of my classes because I was supposed to take them while in UCLA, you know, on campus, the rest of my classes. So there was not going to be no way that I was going to get that done right. while I'm playing because of the schedule. So like speaking of COVID, you know, COVID kind of like, you know, make things possible in the sense where I could able to take classes, you know, because they bring everything online, you know. So I was be I will be training and after training I have to run into like like 10 a.m. class or 11 a.m. class, you know, on Zoom, you know. And and that back then the COVID hit our team and the soccer, we we had a time off, you know, but we were just training, but we wasn't playing games. You know, it took us a bit for us to start the games in June. So, and my, my classes was all around like March, you know, and from, uh, I think from, from March to June. Yeah. Yeah. The spring season, we call it spring semester at UCLA because I had to finish, but it was, it was like a hard task for me to balance it, you know, but I had the vision that this is the only chance I can get to graduate. You know, so I have to do whatever I got to do, you know, so it's just sometimes, like you said, you put in the work, you get, you get, you get the results. So I thank God for making it happen for me. Yeah. Did you, did, how did, uh, hey, how did your professors take it? And did you tell them, hey, I might be late to class one day. I'm a professional footballer. Or, and did you tell coach Tommy, did you tell coach Stone like, hey, might have to leave early. I have an exam today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that one i did so like we be finished team training and i have to rush home you know so i will i will say hey i gotta go maybe we had something to do and i'll just say to like coach that hey coach i gotta go because i got class yeah hey coach i gotta go because i got i got this class i gotta be on zoom call in like 20 minutes you know like uh, you know and my professors too i'll be like you know, like they didn't know, but when we're doing introduction, you know, like, you know, hey, this is me, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, I was, you know, because they want you to introduce yourself in a class when we started. That's how some of them find out that maybe they are because most athletes were doing the same thing I was doing. So it wasn't just me, you know, people that left years back, they were all trying to get the education during that time because that's the only time you can finish. So yeah, it was it was a difficult task, but uh, I'm 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 happy that I got it out of the way. Now it's all about football. Now, yeah. So uh, leaving or when you were left, kind of UCLA, when you're still kind of there but kind of not, you went down to the MLS Combine, and you yeah. end up leaving an MVP. What is the combine experience like? Is it just a bunch of games with some drills? Is it interviews? Like what is it? So the combine it was like, you know, uh, they divide teams into two, you know, and we, we, were, uh, we were there for like three days. Each day we have stuff we need to do. You know, it was mostly like playing wise, you know, like fulfilled with each team named, you know, and then each team had the time they have to go to the field and train, you know, and 
if you do well and you had a good combine, you can have interviews with teams and coaches who are interested in you, who want to check you out, you know. So you just go, you know, they will call you to their room, you know, and you will just have a chat with them and see what they think of you, you know, like it was just an awesome experience because that was like the path to the next level. So you got to give all your best and you got to make sure that, you know, you're doing all the right things so that, you know, these coaches can see who you are, they can know you, you know. So for me, it was just like, it was just an, an awesome experience for me to kind of like being around with different bunch of guys all over the, all over college and everybody showcasing what they got at the top level, you know, to see who, 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 who want an opportunity and who can get it. And, you know, so it was just, Overall, it was just, it was awesome for me because I, I I was just desperate to become a professional footballer, you know? Yeah, because that's what I've been dreaming of. So once you get to a stage like that, it's just amazing feeling because you think like you are closer and closer and closer. So the experience was good. I enjoy it. Grateful for it. So you ended up getting drafted first round with Atlanta yeah. United. Um, yeah. And then they sign you, and it's like they've released a statement saying, like, you played in the preseason, and they absolutely loved you, and then you end up going down to ATL2. Yeah. You know, playing in the – I know you played with Red Bulls too, but what was the Atlanta United experience like? And, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a sore spot, maybe it's not, maybe it's just motivation, but what – you know, what kind of led to the getting waived? It seemed like you were doing great there and they loved you. Kind of what happened? Yeah, so, like, sometimes there's things you can control and there's things that, you know, you, you cannot do anything about it, you know. For me, I'm grateful for Atlanta, you know, giving me a shot, you know, because hey, if it wasn't them, I probably would not be drafted and not be able to showcase my football ability. <laughs> You know, so thanks to them for giving me the exposure for me to be a professional footballer. Uh, it was awesome. You know, I loved it. You know, I liked it. But, you know, like, it's all about, you know, international spa, you know, with visas. And, you know, coming from college, sometimes it's difficult for college athletes, especially if you are international. You know, it's very hard for you to find a place in the MLS with the international spot as from college, you know. Me being like, I, I get to where I was because maybe I was probably, you know, I was probably a baller, you know. I, <laughs> I don't want to get to myself. I mean, I think it's safe many to people, say. <laughs> many, people, many people probably will not get like a shot of it, you know, but. I was able to get the opportunity because of my ability of who I am as a person, but it's difficult because, you know, it's, they don't look at college players the same way. If you are international, you know, it, it takes, you take a whole spot, you know, and they think you're not experienced enough, you know? So like, that was what happened in my situation. You know, I just came from UCLA, you know, Atlanta is a big club, a championship team with full name, big stars. You know, you're not going to just walk off the field and think like you're going to get a spot here right. international. You know? I'm blessed that I was able to get a, a spot for like a couple of months, you know, and showcase what I got. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's football. So you move, you, you, some, you, you know, it's just a moving experience, you know, you, some come, you go, you know, you win some, you lose some, you know, so in my situation, it helps me a lot, you know, because the, me training with the first team and getting the professional, full professional experience was great for me because I was able to learn as much as I can from all the players that I was playing alongside where, you know, yeah, like not be, you know, like great players, Parky, you know, Parker, you know, uh, those veterans guys, you know. So that was what my experience was for. But, you know, I enjoy it because it's, a, it's part of the ride. You know, you have to enjoy every single moment in life, whether good or bad, you know, because that is what makes you who you are. And you learn from those experiences and you become a great person or a better footballer. You know, if some place will not accept you, you can be accepted in other place in life. Yeah, it's never it's never done. 
you know, yeah, it's never say it's over. Never, never. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so that was the situation. You mentioned just the whole way MLS works as being, a you know, the collegiate student who's also international. And mm-hmm. it's pretty well assumed and documented at this point. You know, that's the reason why Legion has guys like you, have guys yes. like Bruno. You know, yes. Br- if Bruno wasn't Brazilian, he would have been drafted as well. You know, so, Fanwell and Thomas and guys mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You know, is there kind of this thing amongst guys who are on the team who are not from Canada or from America that's like, you guys are kind of tight because you kind of know what it takes to make it in the U.S. as a international? Yeah, it's just, you know, everybody have their personal story and a personal grind, you know? It doesn't matter where you're from, you know? There are people that are from here, you know, that don't get the opportunity as well, you know? It's not where you're from. I, I think it's just, I think it's just, the personality of who you are, you know, what you want to achieve, you know, what you want with your life, you know, sometimes every story, everybody's story is different. You know, you can be from any, anywhere in the world. It's just what you personally want in your life, what you want to achieve with football or without football, you know, but for me and for the guys you mentioned, you know, they know where they came from, you know, like, like Bruno knows that he's from Brazil. So he got a chip on his shoulder you know, he got to do well, you know, so when you, it's in training in games, you want to, you want to put your country on a map, you know, you want to do something for yourself so that you can keep your opportunity up because you never know, you know, so I think it's a personal driven thing for each and every one, you know, it's not where you're from, you can be from here, you know, you can be from anywhere in the world, but it's you, what motivates you, what you want with your life, you know, yeah, if you get the opportunity, what you want to do with the opportunity, that separates the mentality wise, you know? Yeah, because you can get the opportunity and not do anything with it because some guys have gotten it before and probably didn't showcase it, you know? So it gives, you know, teams, you know, ways to see players. This guy, is he a good fair, you know? Can we trust, you know, like all sorts of things, but it's, it's also a personal thing for everybody what you want in life so that makes you who you want to be at this level so you have i mean it's kind of funny that maybe not funny is the right word but you end up with legion who it seems like we sign a lot of guys from ghana and guys that you know like cromwell but guys also you play with uh like prosper for you guys even though you and prosper your hometowns are like nine hours apart is yeah. there kind of like a connection of like trying to talk, like when you guys talk about like where you're from and like what his experience was like and what your experience was like, is that, yeah. is that like a real, is there a different connection between a guy, between you and Prosper, between everybody else, or is it pretty much the same all around? Uh, I would say like, you know, it's like the same because like, Talk to Prosper when I met him, you know, we, 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 we chat, you know, he probably by that time know who I am because of, you know, the news and, you know, who I was. But when I met him, I, you know, he already know my story by then, you know, I already know his story about where he came from, you know, what he want to do with life, you know, what the goal is, you know, like when Lapa came in, I already know Lapa's story before coming in you know, who, where he played at, you know, based from other players I know that knows him. Oh, man, my boy is coming in your team, man. Take a good look for me. <laughs> you know, take care of him for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys who contact you, man, this is my boy. He's a good player. You know, so it's like when you meet people, it's just that you can connect and relate based on your story, you know, and based on the same goals that you guys want to achieve, you know. So for me, like, we are nine hours apart, but we all can relate to each other based on our story or what we want, because we all came from Africa, Brazil, you know, we all looking for the same goals, which is be a successful soccer f- uh, footballer, you know, and that's the main, main uh, 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 m- motive in our minds, you know, the other stuff, you know, the history, where you're from, you know, those are the motivation. If you let it motivate you, fine. If not, it's up to you. But for me, I use mine as a motivation big time because I know where I came from and what I want in my life and where I want to be in life. 
So that's always my motivation. It's different from other people. You know, I can't speak for other people, but for me, you know, when I, I'm just gonna, I just know that this is my story and this is how I got here. So I always want to strive for better, you know, and always for the better. So yeah, that's it. So mm -hmm. I talked to uh, uh, Ben Afemu a while ben. back. Um, yeah. He uh, he said that his big one of his big motivations is that he wants to play for the Nigerian uh, national team. You Facts. know, that was one of the things that motivated him. Is the idea of playing for the Ghana national team something that motivates you, or is that kind of not on your radar? Yeah, it motivates me, but you know, at this point, I'm just focusing on my career. You know, yeah, if Ghana, you know, it's like it's more like a it's more like a politics type of standpoint. You know, I'm not bashing them or any type of way, but it's just like you know, other countries pick players from the USL. You know, mm -hmm. you've been seeing like Junior Flemings play for the USL. Now he's making a big move. You know. Uh, he played for Jamaica, you know, Jamaica giving him opportunity, you know, it's every country have their own story, be it with the national team wise. Me, for me, you know, when I was in Ghana, Ghana didn't know me, you know, I was somewhere else, nobody didn't know me. So I'm just focusing on my life, how I can be a successful footballer. If Ghana national team comes along, they want to give me a shot, I will take it because I'm <laughs> all about opportunity. You know, I just, I'm just looking for opportunity in life. If you give me a single opportunity, I'm not going to let it slide, you know, because the opportunity will make you who you want to be, you know, like you get it, you make good use of it. And that's how my life has been. So, but I'm not aiming for it. Like, you know, like I'm not putting all my attention right now. My, my, my career is with Legion. You know, I want to be a, the best version of myself and a successful footballer in America, you know, and even all over the world. But, if Ghana see me that I'm doing well in the USL and they want to give me a shot, I will take it any day, you know. <laughs> but if they won't, I'm not looking like, oh, yeah, I'm really desperate for it. I'm just focusing on ma making sure that I, I stay healthy and keeping playing pro as long as I can, you know. Yeah, I don't know the future, but I want to stay and play as long as I can and stay healthy, you know. If, but if they want to give me a shot, I'm down for it, but it's hard because, you know, it's, it's more like politics everywhere, you know, so it's who you know in Africa. Yeah, who you know. So so part of the reason I ask, and I'm just really curious about this, because recently um, I think Ghana just lost to Algeria 3-0 in AFCON. <laughs> and, you know, Guys, and Afghan has made a really big news recently because of a lot of reason because of Mikey Lopez's former coach and now Crystal Palace's head mm -hmm. coach, uh, Patrick Vieira, yeah. talking about how big Afcon is to the continent. For someone who was there for 16 years, what is Afcon like whenever you're there? How big is it? It's big. I grew up watching Afcon. You know, I grew up watching players like Mike Lacian, Samoa John, all these big top players. You know, like they all played. You know, so I know how big it is for you to leave your club, big club like Chelsea. You know, to come play for your native country and also like a big tournament like that. And for 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 some countries like, you know, they, everybody want to win. You know. Yeah, these players leave millions of dollars, you know, come and just represent your country just, you know, for a victory for their country, you know. So it's, it's, it's like it's big in a standpoint because everybody want to represent their country at a top level, you know. And I feel like Afghan give them the opportunity for them to do that because you African, you're not going to represent Europa Cup or like European tournament, you know? So this is where you got your joy for your country. This is where you want to be like, yeah, man, I want to win something for my country too. So that one day my name can be written in my country book. And for Africans, that is AFCON. So that's how big it is. And Africa produce a lot of great players. So if they say it's big, it, it, it is big because everybody, if you are a kid, your, your goals, is to play for your native country and uh, and to win a trophy for them, you know? And 
all these players, that's what they've been dreaming since they were kids. You know, so for now, for them to get the opportunity to be there, you know, for me, if I'm there, I won't take it for granted. You know, I don't know about all the players, but I grew up watching it. You know, so if I get opportunity to play in it, I will give my best. Yeah, because I know how big it is to me. You know, I don't know about how all the players feel about it. But for me, on my standpoint, it, it's big for me because I grew up watching great players, great players playing Afghan you know, all over Africa, you know, and Africa has produced great players back in the day. So, and still doing it, you know? So it's every kid dream to represent his country and win Afghan for his country. So speaking of all those players, when you were growing up, who was, who was the guy for you? Who was the one that was like, I want to be that guy? Me, man. It was just the one man, the one man and one man only. (laughs) Michael Asien, yeah, I love Good that shout. guy, yeah, I love that guy, yeah, Michael Asien was like my role model growing up, you know, he's still my role model, you know, because I love his game, you know, I love what he brought to the game, and I want to be big like him one day, you know, inshallah, I can do it, but, you know, it's just a matter of time, I love him, you know, he's a good guy, very low-key, underdog, you know, always <laughs> give his best in the game, you know, has done great things in his career. You know, I grew up watching him, you know, and I always look up to him as a player, as a person. You know, he's just a humble guy. I love to, I love to watch him every time. Yeah. My Kalesian was my guy. Yeah. Shout out to my Kalesian. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as I know, maybe, maybe I'll change it up, but last question, I guess, on kind of like your life, like with football in Ghana. Did you watch uh, Aduana Stars growing up? Was that a team that you supported uh, out of uh, uh, Doma? Adiana, Adiana Stars. Aduana, wait, sorry. Adiana Stars. Okay. Yeah, Adiana Stars. How, did you end yeah. up, or did you follow them a lot growing up? Yeah, Adiana Stars. Yeah, I follow Adiana Stars growing up. Yeah, because they were in my native uh, town, so it was very, it was very difficult. Uh, uh, it was very difficult for me, but I didn't. My dad played for Diana. Yeah. Really? Yeah, my dad played for Diana. Yeah, my dad was a soccer player. He played for Diana. So, but my dad didn't want me to play for Diana when I was growing up. My dad wanted me to get education. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't. I, I went to school instead of joining Diana. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I just stick around with my Doma Senior High School and we will play games with Adiana. Yeah, but I, I train and play games with Adiana, but it wasn't like I didn't sign or permanent or anything because my dad was a soccer player there and he didn't want me to end up like him, you know, in Adiana, you know, so he wanted me to have a better future. So he always advised me, don't play for Adiana. But Adiana is my favorite team in Doma Hinkro. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Adiana. <laughs> they're, they're a pretty good club I've seen recently, winning some championships in the yeah. last few years. Yeah. So, I mean, for you growing up watching your dad play professional football, do you and your dad play the same position? No, my dad, my dad, my dad was like a, 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 a overall player. My dad was just a winger, you know, like a skillful guy. <laughs> You know, like he was just all about the goals, you know, like, yeah, he was fast, strong. Yeah, good player. Uh, me, I was the same. I play every position in my life, you know. So I, I, I choose to play defensive man because when I came to the state, I feel like that was where I could adapt very quickly because of my uh, uh, energy in the middle of the game, trying to win balls, you know. Because that's what I, I wanted to do, you know, because I wanted everybody want to dribble, everybody want to do that stuff, you know, but I wanted to be more exceptional, you know, with my ability of doing things that people can do, but not like as good as I can do it. So I mastered the game because that's why I, I say Asian was my role model, because I look up to guys like that. So when I got the picture of the way he plays, I wanted to be like him. So I studied the way to to play like those guys, but I had like I had those 
I will say my dad ingredients in my pocket. Yeah, it's in my back pocket. I use it when I need to use it, you know? <laughs> but he was a very, very good guy, you know? Like, great guy, you know? So I just enjoy, I, I just enjoy watching him. I, I used to watch my dad. He used to hold my hands and take me to the games in Adiana. You know, I used to go see him score goals and celebrate, hold his cleats for him. You know, those were all my motivation growing up, you know? Yeah. So I'm, 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 people don't know that my dad played the game, you know, <laughs> because it's low key, but my dad was a very, very good player. Very good player. So, so, He's the superstar in Adiana. The whole Doma, everybody knows him. Superstar. Yeah. In, no Adiana, kidding. In, in Doma, in Crow. Nobody, everybody knows my dad. So when I was growing up, people used to call me his name. That's why I got more notice, more. And I stick with the game with school. I would do the same thing while he was doing it in school games and everything. So it's just I love the game because it's it's inherited from my dad, you know. So I want to keep going. Yeah. And now I'm grateful that the game has brought me to a very place like this, special place for me not to just be a just a soccer player, but just also to being able to get education in my life as well, you know. Yeah. You know, it sounds, I mean, from what you say, it sounds like he was a fan favorite, you know, back at home. And now, yeah. like we started off talking about your fan favorite here with your, uh, I, I know you have to hear it, but I got to <laughs> ask your opinion on the five foot six chant. Is, are you a big fan <laughs> of that one or what? I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm very grateful that, uh, you know, Legion fans really recognize me you know, with it, you know, because uh, it shows that they really appreciate who I am as a player, you know, and they know what, since I came to Legion, my effort and my contribution to the team has been. So I'm just, I'm just pleased by the way they, they, they welcoming me and showing appreciation of love to me, you know, and anytime I hear it, it's kind of like gives me extra motivation to do more. You know, uh, uh, that's how it's been so far. But I'm grateful for the, the vibe they've been giving me. Legion is always in my heart and always a place that I will always not forget because they have shown me so much love over these years because, you know, like, I wasn't like that in college, you know. Right. You know, college is like every sports you know, so many sports, you know. So it's like being able to have recognized by a place like Alabama, Birmingham, everybody showing you love, you know, like it gives you extra motivation and it tells you that the sky is the limit, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm grateful for it. I mean, so I, I know I've taken up a lot of your time, so I'm going to get to- No, 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 no. <laughs> it's good. I'll get to some of the last few questions I have. Um, I'm sure maybe you saw it. It was not too long before we started this call, but we're opening up protective stadium against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. You know, the match that ended our season last year, unfortunately, you know, are you and the boys who, you know, have all resigned at this point, you know, have you, are you and the boys already talking about it? Are you guys, Right. And how are, are you looking forward to that matchup against the Rowdies in our home stadium this time? Oh, man. I'm so excited about it. You know, this is our revenge at our home stadium. You know, like it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute since we kind of like beat the Rowdies. So the last time we beat the Rowdies was 2019. So I feel like this year, if you are in a team, you should have extra motivation as a player. Don't let me tell you. <laughs> but every player on the team should be very motivated that we should win the rallies. And for players that are coming in, they should know what the, the kind of like the vibe should be because the rallies and I and us has been like a big competition back these years. You know, and I think this is our time for us to have a like a real competition at a real level, 
<laughs> so I'm excited for it. I hope every guy at Birmingham at this moment is excited for it as well, because, you know, we want to have a great season next year, uh, which is this year. So if you are a guy and you're not motivated for this game, I don't know what will motivate you <laughs> ever again. Yeah. So for me, I'm motivated. I just saw it today and I'm, I'm pumped. I'm working hard, trying to come back and do the same thing I did this year, you know, to keep my legacy and my name going. So I'm just ready for it because it's a game of football. Every moment is a moment. You have to show what you got. So I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, what are, I've already talked to Trevor about this, you know, yeah. for, for the fans coming in and also for you guys going into this new stadium that, hopefully won't have sand on it and hopefully won't be rained out every single match. You know, are the players just the, just as excited to the move for protective stadium as the fans are? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody is excited because it's going to help us. It's a big field, you know, like uh, games will not be canceled. You know, for me, looking at the, the pros is good pros, you know? Yeah. You know, the, the, the turf will look sharp. You know, they can put water on it. You know, it can look good. Yeah, even it reminds me of the game we play against uh, uh, at, the, at the, the big stadium this year, you know. Uh, the uh, Legion at Legion. Uh, the Memphis Legion at Legion, yeah. I think it was, a, it was a good game. And I feel like we have so much space to play, you know. So I'm just excited. I don't know. I, I know some guys... I excited about it because regardless of the situation, it's football. It doesn't matter where you stand. If you say you love football and you're a great footballer, if they put you in the middle of the ocean, you still still deliver. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys were basically playing in the middle of the ocean last year. Right? <laughs> so at this point, I don't know what can motivate anybody. But for me, I'm motivated because I used to play in the dirt, you know, in Africa. You know, so being able to play at a beautiful stadium like this, you know, with good good fans and good energy, I'm excited for it. You know, I don't know about all the guys, but the ones that I know, I know they are as excited as I am because this is a game of football. You know, regardless of where the, the venue is, you should be excited because this is the job God has gifted <laughs> you with and you're doing it for your living. So there shouldn't be like any blah, blah, blah. You know, you just have to go in and do your part, you know. And I feel like that's the, that's the vibe at this moment. Yeah. You know, I'm excited for it. Very big time. Yeah. I'm happy. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how uh, a protective stadium, you know, becomes like a historical place for Legion because we're going to make it a history this year, you know? And I think that's why everybody is getting ready mentally and they're making good changes making sure that we got the squad we need to do what we need to do but for me i'm happy i'm happy very very happy i'm excited i saw it i was there and i can't wait to get it started yeah can't wait doesn't matter <laughs> those i mean everybody that i've talked to is just absolutely over the moon which i know for i was one of the people that was kind of a little bit worried about the move because the one thing that was nice about bbba is that you could if you yelled something onto the field, you knew everybody heard it because it was so yeah. small. Um, but, you know, the more and more I've heard players talk about it, the more and more excited I get for it. So I'm, I'm glad that that's staying. I'm glad that that's a, a thing that is across the board. Of course. I'm happy. I'm happy. Very, very happy. Because at this point, I feel like Legion has done so well in this past three years that we deserve like a big venue, you know, and I think every fan in Alabama should know that, you know, Legion is doing great things in Alabama. So we need all their support this year. Yeah, I'm calling it. If they love the game, they should come out and support us because without their support, we, we can never be where we need to be, you know, because the reason why I'm saying that, I feel like Tampa Bay wasn't a good team than us, but their support has made them give them the energy for them to deliver. Yeah, it's good to have a good crowd behind you all the time, you know, because if you have the crowd behind you, you feel like you have something to play for, you know, like more, because you have the fans screaming, shouting, 
you know, they're relentless, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I feel like we need that coming in, you know? We need to fill that stadium before, you know, like at least this year, if we get a home playoff game, we need to fill that stadium. Because looking at it, it's the best place, you know, it's the best venue. I saw like a game and it was packed recently. And the way it was, it's just amazing. Yeah. I, I, I was imagining playing like soccer, like playing under that, like that many fans. It would be awesome. Yeah. Very awesome. So I pray and I, I will keep advertising for Legion fans for them to give everything so that they can... You know, if they love us and they love they love me and they love uh, our team, they should come and support us this year. Very excited for it. I can't wait. Oh, man. I'm ready to run through a brick wall. I, can this season start, like, now? Or... <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, is this going to start soon? March. March is coming. Two months. Two oh, months. Yeah. Feels like wow. forever. Feels like forever. I know. <laughs> I know. Now we need to start advertising for the Tampa Bay game so that we can have like our first game should be like a great atmosphere, you know. And I think we should have that. So we need to pull the strings and see, you know, advertise it more, you know, like even if we have to use every aspect of it to showcase and advertise it. You know, I'm down to make sure that we can have as much many fans that can cheer for us against on that game because we cannot allow Tampa Bay to kind of like right now our ratio with them is not that good. So <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to win. You know, everybody trying to win, but I think this is and and it's our first game too. You know, <laughs> so we should we should go for it. You know, we should win. You know, and I I, I believe that. We cannot do it just by ourselves, you know. We need at least, at least 20,000 fans. At least 20,000. At least, I'm calling it. <laughs> yeah, because, because it's going to be great atmosphere because Tampa Bay is a great team, you know, like no offense, but it's just that we need to beat them. And I feel like this, this year is our year to do that. And we're going to do it at Prestative Stadium as our fans win. And we cannot do it by ourselves. We need the fans. So if anybody listens to this podcast, please come support us on March 13th against Tampa Bay Rowdies. You bring the fire for them. Oh, let's freaking go. <laughs> so before I let you before I let you go, I have two more questions for you. No problem, boss. Outside of football. What yes. do you what do you like to do? What's your hobbies whenever you're not on the pitch? You know, I'm trying to so you know like my hobby is soccer. You know, I stick with soccer all all year round. You know, when I'm not doing anything, I'm just watching soccer. You know, watching my my players. I can learn from them. Players, I can I can at least learn something from them. Because this journey is all about learning piece by piece, you know, like, and I feel like it's, it's a game where if I'm not like learning, like, I don't want to, I don't have anything else to do. So like, if I'm home or like after game, I just go home and just watch players that I like, you know, players that I think they resemble me players that I think I can be like them one day, you know, just players that I feel like I can learn as much as I can from them, you know? So my hobby is just learning from all the players besides soccer. You know, I like Alabama, but sometimes, you know, you be finishing training and, you know, you just exhausted, you know, you just want to go home and just relax, you know, because the next day you come into training again, you know? And that's the, the, that's the discipline I encourage, you know, my fellow teammates to kind of like have, you know, the discipline and the willing sacrifice, you know, to do little, little things that can help them to have a great game or to, to help them to have a, like, a, you know, a good training session, not wasting the energy running around, 
you know, too much when it's hot, you know, not doing so many extra stuff, but just stick around with the game and just consume as much energy they can so that they can be ready for what the tax is. Once the season is over, obviously, you know, I love to be around my family and just, you know, spend time with family. But when I'm there, my hobby is just, you know, chilling. Yeah, because that's the job that I'm there for. So I'm trying to prep myself to do the job in a good way so that I can always be where I need to be for my job. Yeah. So I'm not like a big hobby guy outside football. I just relax, enjoy life in my roof. <laughs> so last last question. For, and I can't thank you enough for, you know, for taking oh, your time on, for man. this. I so have the Leons been able to come down to Birmingham yet? Yes. So we have a season ticket at Birmingham. Good. We've been, good. We've been having season tickets for the past uh two years now. Yeah. Yeah. This year we're gonna have a season ticket. The Leons comes every year, you know, to see me play, you know, spend time with me, you know, go to places in Alabama, you know, like you know, tour Alabama a little bit you know, go to museums, you know, history places, you know, like it's, it's, it's incredible. You know, anytime my family's there, it's kind of like amazing because it's good to have family, you know, watching you play or, you know, seeing how proud they've become, you know, all these years, you know, being able to see you play at a professional level, you know what I mean? Yeah, we have, we used to have seats right right on the field yeah right there you know and you know we also in trying to you know be a huge part of legion community you know so we give like tickets to like people if my family cannot make it you know i dm people that you know that like they want to sit close or some, my favorite fan or somebody who likes me or like you know i would I will dm them and say hey you know, we have this ticket. We would like to you to use it, you know, for being an amazing fan, you know, or being my fan, you know, this is a ticket for you. You can use it. But yeah, the Leon's always in Birmingham. Yeah, at least twice, three times. My dad comes to like most of the games when he's not busy with work, you know, like my brother, my siblings, everybody. Yeah, they're all there all the time. Well, yeah. next time they come around, tell them to reach out and we'll, you know, take care of them whenever they're around. So oh, for make, sure. let, you know, tell them to hit us up and we'll, we'll take care of them. Easy, my brother. I will do that. <laughs> well, thank you again for your time, man. Uh, I'll let you go on to doing your thing. So, oh, no, no, no. I, I thank you for, for, for the opportunity. You know, like I said, in life, I'm looking for opportunity. So you gave me the opportunity for me to tell my story to people, to hear and motivate people, you know, even now in Alabama, but all over the world, that everything is possible in this world. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, if you set your mind that you can do it, you can do it because everybody have a reason on being on this head. You know, you just have to do your part and God will do the rest. So I thank you for giving me that opportunity for me to showcase myself on your podcast. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you very much. And I hope to see you soon and we ride together again. <laughs> always, always. Thank you, man. <laughs> Easy, my brother. God bless. God bless. God, God bless. bless. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.